Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Tuesday, July 26th, 2022, and in just about two years, we will be heading into the 2024 Democratic Convention. It will be a very important one because there will be a lot leading up to it, to the eventual nominee for 2024 for the Democratic Party that could be very, very interesting. Now, in a new poll from the University of New Hampshire, they actually found that on a ballot, Pete Buttigieg defeats President Biden in a matchup by one percentage point, with many other contenders getting a significant portion of the vote. Now, Joe Biden is being treated as the incumbent here. This is not a 2020 poll. This is not taking a sample from two years ago and releasing it today. This is amongst voters now, from July 21st through 25th, in which only 16% of Democrats in New Hampshire believe that Joe Biden should be the 2024 Democratic nominee. Looking at the candidates here, they put a number of people. Pete Buttigieg, of course, in the lead. You already know he's on the question there. But you also have Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, who has risen to popularity in a similar way that we have seen Governor Ron DeSantis. Gavin Newsom now ranks as the second most likely Democratic nominee, according to the political betting markets. And honestly, that doesn't seem to be pushed away by some of the polls that we are seeing released. You also have Elizabeth Warren on the line of questioning here. Amy Klobuchar, those are two senators, one from Massachusetts, one from Minnesota. Senator Bernie Sanders, Vice President Kamala Harris, who I'm not entirely sure why they would put up her against President Biden. Maybe they didn't want to ask multiple questions, one without Biden, one with Biden, but that probably would have been a lot better for understanding, because considering Biden being at 16%, Harris being at 6 I'd like to believe that those candidates together would make a combined vote share by the end of the uh, primary season if one was to be running and not the other. You also have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the representative from New York, uh, the very well known, known better as AOC, part of the squad in the House. You have Stacey Abrams, the uh, right now Democratic nominee for governor in the state of Georgia, Hillary Clinton, 2016 presidential nominee, Cory Booker, senator from New Jersey. Uh, I believe this is maybe Chris Murphy, not entirely sure. Maybe I, I know there's a Patrick Murphy. I'm not entirely sure which Murphy this is. Probably that one. Gretchen Whitmer at 1%. Jared Pohl is at 0 JB Pritzker at 0 Interesting. And Gina Raimondo at 0%. So these numbers here are telling us something that we have seen a lot on the national numbers. And it's that Democrats, independents, and Republicans simply don't want President Biden to run again. Quinnipiac University just did a poll recently back uh, in, uh, I think, a week and a half ago, showing that 71% of all Americans don't want Joe Biden to run for president again. Now, it's the same thing with President Trump at 64% of Americans saying they don't want him to run again either. Donald Trump being in this position where he is practically gearing up a presidential bid, Joe Biden on the verge of announcing a re-election bid, we might be in for a matchup again between the top two contenders from 2020 in 2024. But American voters simply just don't want that. Now, it might be alarming to see that 71% of Americans don't want Biden to run, con uh, contrasted with 64% of Americans. But what I will say is that Joe Biden's criticism largely comes from the Democratic Party, which is why his number is so low. If it came down to actually voting, I don't think that Joe Biden would lose by, what, a seven-point margin just because we're off by seven points now in terms of who wants people to run or not. I think if Trump is to win the 2024 election against Biden, it will be narrow. It's not going to be this exceptionally large victory, as these numbers might suggest, uh, because that's not exactly what, it's, uh, what it is suggesting. You can find here that 54% of Democrats do not want Joe Biden to run again. So they are very clear that they would prefer somebody else. And that's exactly what's happening in the state of New Hampshire. But being realistic, I think that this is just more so of a way for us understanding that, hey, Joe Biden is in a vulnerable position because the Democrats don't want him to run again. But most of these candidates would never run against President Biden. Pete Buttigieg is in this position of power as the Secretary of Transportation because of Biden. Gavin Newsom is in this position of power, not necessarily because of Joe Biden, but is really only in this uh, political verse being in collaboration with the White House, uh, Joe Biden going down to the state of California for Gavin Newsom during his recall election, sending out TV ads. I mean, Gavin Newsom probably wouldn't be running against President Biden because Newsom is up for re-election this year and he could honestly wait. Buttigieg, Newsom, they're young. They don't need another bid. 
Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders don't look like they're exactly inclined to try to challenge a sitting president. They have very good working relationships relationships with President Biden, and I don't think that they would try to jeopardize uh, what they have for the sake of the seat. In addition to that, you also have some coinciding elections with 2024. Both of the Senate seats here for Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders would be up in 2024. So it's either the Senate or the presidency where they switch last minute. And I can't say that's something that's going to look super popular, but people have done it many, many times before. Amy Klobuchar, again, I don't know. Kamala Harris, never going to run against Biden one-on-one -on -one unless something crazy happens. Probably something similar to maybe calling on her resignation from the White House, and then she decides to run. Uh, I mean, that's just a complete, complete abnormality. It would never happen in American politics, maybe actually, but never happen in this administration at least, because they're very simple about what they do, and they're very much uh, back to the basics, back to the normalcy, which is not some type of significant cabinet shakeup such as that one. Uh, for the rest of these candidates, I really just don't think that they're going to run. Stacey Abrams, if she loses this governor bid, is not going to run for president. Hillary Clinton is not going to run for president. Cory Booker, uh, AOC would never run against President Biden. I mean, the question is here, you know, would any of these candidates run against Biden? And the answer for 90% of them is no. And for the rest of them that would be trying to challenge Joe Biden, it honestly wouldn't look good for their political career that they tried to challenge a sitting incumbent, especially if that sitting incumbent goes on to the 2024 election and loses. Imagine that. Imagine a Democrat runs against Biden, gets some type of recognition, loses the primary because people will almost always vote for the incumbent. There has never been a time where a sitting incumbent president has been primaried by their own party. That has never happened in American history and likely won't happen because incumbency is the most important factor in every single election, sometimes to the detriment of the candidate. But looking at these numbers here, what we should take away from it is that these national numbers also translate down to statewide numbers. I don't think that there would be a candidate to run against Biden. But as I was saying, imagine one did, got a third of the vote in the primary, initially was in a position where maybe they forced Biden to come to the debates, Biden to campaign for his primary. And as a result, you found a fractured Democratic Party in a year that wasn't meant to be open in the first place, and the Democrats lose the election. Now, that's not to blame that candidate entirely for the loss, but you do have to say that there is something to be said about what the loss did and what the uh, willingness to run against an incumbent, what message that sent to the American people. Because if Biden was truly going to be running for president in 2024, he should be doing so oppo uh, entirely unopposed. So he isn't focused on a primary. He's not being torn down by members of his own party, cross endorsements against him. That's never something you want as an incumbent. And every incumbent has been lucky enough to avoid that. But Joe Biden could be in a different position. But also, I think it's unrealistic to expect any of these Democrats to run against him. But the numbers here are definitely alarming because it means that voters heading into 2024 aren't going to be thrilled to vote for President Donald, uh, President Joe Biden. But it also doesn't mean that they're going to be thrilled to vote for President Donald Trump. Looking at the possibility, the uh, very, very high likeliness that we end up in a matchup of 2020 again is honestly fascinating. The fact remains, Donald Trump is running for president in 2024, and Joe Biden probably will too. I can't imagine that they give up this nomination to someone who isn't Kamala Harris either, and I think that Joe Biden would face a better chance at President Trump than Kamala Harris would. Looking at it from an analytical standpoint, a political standpoint, whatever you want to call it, it's weird to see your sitting incumbent decide to leave after one term willingly and not being ousted by the voters. And while Joe Biden's numbers are down, he quite literally is one of the best chances for the Democratic Party to win in 2024 because they're just in this weird position where if you replace him, you're going to nominate him with someone who doesn't have the incumbency factor who might not do as well as Biden. But if you run him, he might lose because of his low approval. I don't think Biden's approval rating will remain this way for the next two years. I think it's bound to bump back up. Gas prices are expected to go down. You're finding that the economy is expected to be back on track. If the Biden administration is able to handle monkeypox correctly, that's something that could work well in their favor because everything in American politics is about optics. If gas prices go down to 350 in the parts where it's now currently 450, American voters will be much more happy. Even though Joe Biden has been saying constantly that he isn't the one to blame for gas prices, that he's trying to do everything he can to lower the gas prices, American voters are only going to be looking at it from the perspective of, are gas prices high? Well, thus Joe Biden must be at fault. The same way that the coronavirus was very much blamed on President Trump, even though it was a pandemic, thus meaning that it was global. So, I don't know. I think it's very difficult to 
see what could be right and wrong for the Democratic Party in 2024, but I would never imagine that anyone would try to run against President Biden in this matchup. It is interesting, though, because it does show what we could be expecting to see in future presidential elections. If voters in New Hampshire know these names now and didn't exactly know them two years ago, it's a good sign for some of these Democrats, notably Pete Buttigieg, who very well could make a return to the presidency. There's nothing stopping him from there. His loss, he did very well for someone who was a mayor of South Bend up against representatives, senators, governors, did much better than most candidates and became a very notable name within the Democratic Party. That's why he's in the White House today. Gavin Newsom, governor of California, comes from a state where one in eight residents in the entire country are from California. He has something to be said about governing a significant portion of this nation and could argue that and could run for president after his term concludes in 2028. You could also have not Elizabeth Warren, not Amy Klobuchar, not Bernie Sanders, but also Kamala Harris. Also, AOC, if she's at 5% in New Hampshire, as this very young politician wants to say in 20 years from now, as she builds up more recognition, maybe runs for Chuck Schumer's seat or Kirsten Gillibrand's seat, whoever might be ends up in the Senate becomes an even more outspoken critic of the internal Democratic Party and Republican Party, you might build a name for yourself even further than what you have. Go beyond the squad, go beyond what people talk about you already. And AOC already has a starting point for New Hampshire. Most candidates never even have a starting point as early as this, much less against a sitting incumbent. There are voters in New Hampshire that are saying, I would choose AOC over Joe Biden today. There are voters out there saying, I would choose Gavin Newsom over Joe Biden today. And the fact that Biden was able to defeat Warren, Klobuchar, Sanders, Harris, uh, you know, all these candidates that ran, Booker, Buttigieg even, it's something to be said about those candidates being able to even get voters when the other option, the incumbent option, is there on the ballot. It's a very similar thing that we're seeing with Ron DeSantis or Ted Cruz or Nikki Haley in the Republican nomination, because the fact that they are getting voters out there when there's a very clear and easy option for them, aka their incumbent for Republicans, that's Donald Trump, it means that there are voters out there that are willing to support them, even over who the Democratic Party or the Republican Party is putting up as number one, and definitely should be considered for future nominations. Looking at the predicted betting odds right now, Joe Biden has less than a one in three chance at being the presidential nominee. But that's because we haven't seen a conclusive announcement from him. In fact, we are more sure that President Trump is going to run in 2024 than we are about President Biden. And that's why it gets difficult. Yes, he has declared his intention to run. Every single time the White House has asked that question, does Joe Biden plan to run for re-election? They answer it in a very similar fashion. They go somewhere along the lines of saying that President Biden has already made it clear that he intends to run for president in 2024. He hasn't officially filed the paperwork. He hasn't officially declared re-election. Donald Trump did so the day after he was elected for president, but uh, the day after that he was sworn into office. But, I mean, we will see, right? Joe Biden is in a very weird position because he puts the Democratic Party in a very weird position where they clearly want somebody else. And that could mean that heading into 2024, they won't be nearly as thrilled to vote against Biden. I think it'll be more so or a similar story of what we saw of being people being not so much thrilled, but motivated to vote against President Trump. That's what we might see happen. That's the best case that we could see happen for uh, the Democratic Party. And that's why, you know, they're in this position where, hey, they are very vulnerable with President Biden as a nominee, but also they're very vulnerable without him as a nominee. And that's why I think that we are going to see some considerations uh, of replacing him. But I also don't know if that's the right move. It's very difficult to predict this far out. But the 2020 election showed that races do come down to the wire. Had 44,000 votes gone differently out of the over 150 million cast in the country, Donald Trump would have been reelected. Wisconsin came down to 0.6%, Georgia by 0.2%, Arizona by 0.3%. These states came down to the wire. And that's even with all that enthusiasm and energy against President Trump. President Trump did well in many states. Joe Biden did well too. He flipped Arizona and Georgia for the first time since 92 for Georgia, 96 for Arizona, and that can't be really overstated. Joe Biden did what many Democrats thought were impos was impossible. And yes, it was with the times. Yes, it was with the culture shifts. Yes, it was with the demographic shifts. But that doesn't mean that Joe Biden didn't exactly do this as a candidate. He definitely added something to the Democratic Party's playbook, and that was a Sunbelt strategy. 
that had never been tapped into since Bill Clinton, or simply was unable to be tapped into, knowing that Georgia and Arizona went to President Bush by double digits in both of, both of his elections. John McCain went one of them, I believe, Arizona by double digits, Georgia not so much. And then 2012, Romney wins them, I think nine points in Arizona, uh, and then double digits in the state of Georgia. The point being that these states got significantly narrower than where they were a decade ago. And President Biden can definitely take credit for a lot of these shifts here. And the Democrats winning both Senate seats in both Georgia and Arizona show a shift that accompanied was accompanied by President Biden's nomination for president. So 2024 will be a very interesting race to watch. I honestly think it would be crazy if we ended up back in a position between Trump and Biden. I think Ron DeSantis could take out Donald Trump when it comes down to the Republican nomination, but there's also no guarantee of that. Donald Trump still polls in the 50s, which means he's still on track to be the GOP nominee. For context, he won with just 44% of the vote in 2016, and that's after adding in states when every other candidate had already dropped out, and the number only rose to 44%. You can win with a plurality within the Republican Party, and that is practically how it's been for quite some time. It was also not a one-on-one -on -one race in 2016. Ted Cruz, John Kasich were in the race for a very similar time. So was Marco Rubio. I mean, it became very difficult to sort of differentiate Trump, Cruz, Kasich, Rubio. Trump was the only one that really jumped out to people as a different type of candidate, and he won. This time around, that might not work, but it also very well could, because two incumbents are on the verge of potentially announcing that they will be running for president or not, and it'll be very interesting if they both do because chances are they end up against each other, and we're right back to square uh, zero. But this time, the election results might be different. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already, and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch, and then a playlist for my 2024 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all later today.